What's up everybody? Today we're just going to do some quick tests on a new Mac Mini to see how it handles 4K video editing using Final Cut Pro. First let me give you a quick rundown of the specs of this machine. It's a 2018 Mac Mini that I bought in 2020 after they upgraded the base storage capacity of all their models. This model stands right in the middle of the Mac Mini lineup as far as the processor goes with a 3GHz 6-core Intel i5 CPU. It has 8GB of DDR4 RAM in a configuration with two 4GB DIMMs. For graphics, it has an Intel UHD 630 which are integrated graphics. And finally, this one has 500GB of SSD storage which you'll probably see listed as 512GB on any spec sheet. Now let's jump into Final Cut and see what we're working with. Here's a Final Cut project that I'm going to be testing with. There are a couple of settings that I want to point out. First, the background rendering has been turned off, so we know that we're seeing the actual real-time performance of the CPU and GPU processing the original video files. Next, the view quality is set to better quality, which is putting more stress on the system to display more detailed video. And Final Cut is set to use the optimized slash original media. In this case, I didn't create any optimized media, so we're not using that. Instead, we're using the original media for playback and editing, and not proxy media, which would make playback and editing less resource intensive. So basically, everything is set to make things as difficult as possible for the system to handle, so we can get a good idea of what this system is actually capable of. Here you can see a bunch of 4K clips that were added to the timeline. All these clips were recorded using a Panasonic G9. There's an 8-bit clip here that was recorded at 100 megabits per second. Here's a 10-bit clip recorded at 150 megabits per second. And here's another 10-bit clip also recorded at 150 megabits per second but instead using HLG or a hybrid log gamma. For performance metrics, it's only the 10-bit part that really matters so I won't be doing too much testing with this clip as the performance differences are really not noticeable between the 10-bit HLG clip which uses the BT2020 color space and the other 10-bit clip that's using a Rec. 709 color space. We'll start off with some playback testing using the 8-bit clip. Everything looks pretty smooth to me and I don't see any frame drops. Let's also do some timeline scrubbing to see how things will respond. And I don't think I see any hiccups here. I can move forward, backward, and the system is keeping up just fine. Looks good. We can move on to the 10-bit clip now and do the same. First, we'll take a look at the playback. Now we can see that we're dropping a few frames here. So let's move on to scrubbing the timeline. Yeah, and if playback was struggling, then we're also going to see that the system is going to have problems with scrubbing. We see here that it can't keep up as well as it could do with the 8-bit clip. Now let's test out the performance with some effects applied to the clip. Going back to the 8-bit clip, I've applied a custom LUT and I've used an instance of color wheels doing something standard like raising the highlights, dropping the shadows, and I adjusted the white balance a little. I'm just going to look for a nice place to start the playback. Okay, now let's see how it does. Playback looks pretty good. Next we can try the scrubbing. And all right, that looks pretty good too. Let's get into the 10-bit clip here and apply the LUT and color wheels. Since this one was struggling even without the effects, we know we're going to see a little more of the same here. And as expected, we're still dropping frames during the playback. Also, during scrubbing, once again, things just can't quite keep up. So since the system was struggling with the 10-bit clip, let's see if we can change any settings that will give us a little better performance. First, we'll try changing the view quality from better quality to better performance. And let's see what that does for us. I'm not sure how much of a change that made, but I can still see frames being dropped. So let's go ahead and stop the playback there. Another thing we can do is try transcoding some proxy media to see if that'll help out. It'll take a little while to encode the proxies, but let's go ahead and do it. Here's the clip we want a proxy for. Then just go ahead and select OK to create proxy media. And then we'll wait for it to finish. Now that our proxy is done encoding, I'll close this window out and then we can go into our view menu again and set media to proxy. 
As you can see, I don't have any proxy media generated for the other clips, so that's why they look like this here. Now we can test the playback on our clip. I don't know about you, but that playback looks pretty smooth to me. Moving on to the scrubbing. That's looking a lot better too. I can't really tell the difference between that and the 8-bit scrubbing performance that we saw earlier. Since that's looking good, we can try to re-enable the custom LUT and color wheels from earlier and test out playback. Playback looks good. Now once again with the scrubbing. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm not seeing the system struggling at all to keep up. Everything looks clean. Now we know that if we use proxies with 10-bit clips, then everything works out fine and we can edit smoothly even with some level of effects applied to our clip. Now that we've seen the playback and scrubbing, we're just going to export some clips to see how long each takes. First up, let's look at an export of the 8-bit clip to a master file using the H.264 codec, which is probably what many of you are using. Here we just give the export file a name, hit save, and then wait for the export to finish. Alright, that one's all done. And it took about 2 minutes and 4 seconds to complete. Now we'll move on to the 10-bit clip. Again, we can just give it a name, hit save, and then we wait. This time the export took 3 minutes and 23 seconds. Last up, we have the 10-bit HLG clip, which shouldn't really be much different, but I'm going to go ahead and try it out anyway. You can see here that I just put two clips back to back so that the length would be the same as the other clips at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and export this one and then see what we get. And that one was almost the same as the one before at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So is this Mac Mini a good fit for 4K video editing with Final Cut? Well, for the type of video editing I do, I think it works just fine. 4K 8-bit video editing is smooth as is and 4K 10-bit editing is just as smooth as long as you're willing to take the time to transcode the proxy media. The export times that we saw won't make any headlines, but I really don't mind because I can always just hit export, take a break, have a cup of coffee, and then return to the completed export. No big deal. In the near future, I'm going to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, run these same tests again to see if there's any performance improvement, and then drop another video with the results, so be on the lookout for that one. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.